Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to today's video. We are going to be talking about the brand new foundation and concealer from Juvia's Place. Boy, oh boy, do I have my thoughts and opinions on this. I have filmed this video about three times. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I tried filming it as a first impressions, didn't feel very confident about that. I felt like I had some more testing to do. I just really didn't feel comfortable bringing you guys a first impressions on this product based on my initial opinion of it. I then tried to film this on Saturday as well. Again, felt like I needed to do another wear test on it. And now here I am. So I have tried this product two times given full wear tests. I have applied it with a brush. I have applied it with a sponge. I have applied it mixing in a facial oil. In fact, on Saturday when I tried to film this review, I did one half of my face for you guys with a sponge and then the other half with a brush as well as mixing the product with a facial oil just to kind of test out the formula. I really, really, really wanted to give it a very thorough test for you guys. So I definitely have my thoughts. I do have a lot of B-roll footage, me applying it. I did film part of my wear test on Thursday that I did this past Thursday. I did do a wear test while I was at work. So I will be sharing that footage with you guys as well. Do I have this on my face right now? One of the products I do and one I don't. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the video and let me give you the nitty gritty on the brand new products from Juvia's Place. All right, let's start off talking about the foundation. Again, I have mine in the shade Capri number 630. The texture of this is pretty thick and it does offer some extremely insane coverage. This is going to cover every little blemish, ounce of redness, brown spots, age spots, sunspots, any uneven pigmentation that you have. This foundation is going to do the trick coverage wise. It does blend out pretty easily and effortlessly. Effortlessly. Upon testing it, like I said, I tried it with a brush and a sponge. I enjoyed this much more using a sponge. I know that they launched a brush with this, but I'm going to tell you with the type of formula and my type of skin, I definitely preferred the Beauty Blender. The brush made it almost look like product was sitting on top of the skin. It also looked like it was dragging in some spots, like it was hugging any kind of dryness I had around my nose here, um, on the chin. My skin is kind of going going through some dry, weird stage right now. Probably all the stress from planning my wedding and everything. But nonetheless, a lot of the foundations that I love, I can get away with it even then. So I did find this did drag onto some dry patches. My biggest beef with this foundation was the longevity of it. Upon initial application, it looked so good on my skin. I looked poreless and airbrushed and it just looked like I had a filter on my skin. It looked so good. Other products did layer on top of it beautifully. It definitely did give me a velvety matte finish. On the box, it actually says that it will give you a second skin, it's a second skin creamy foundation that will give you a soft natural matte finish. It gives you flawless coverage. It says it's radiant, long lasting, creamy and comfortable. I don't find that it was very radiant. In fact, I feel like on me personally, it looked pretty matte. Natural skin, again, eh, eh, loosely, at least on me. I feel like if you have oilier skin, you might have a little bit of that coming through, some more of that radiance, some more of that softer look. For me also, it did look just a tad bit heavy on the skin. So I do have to comment on that as well. Throughout the day wearing this, I did have some troubles and I'll get into that in just a moment, but I do wanna talk about the concealer. This is the product that I do actually have on right now and I actually really, really loved it. Spoiler alert, I'm not gonna go on too much about it, but I will say that it is a very creamy formula, offers some amazing coverage, blends out so easily. Again, I did enjoy the sponge with this versus the brush, but it gave me awesome coverage under my eyes. It doesn't look too matte or thick, exaggerates any texture. It looks quite beautiful. I do have to bake with this one though. If I do not bake, I do get some pretty intense creasing, but I love the shade range and again, the ease of use. I love the giant doe foot applicator and the texture of this product is just spot 
on. I also like that I can get away with using a lighter shade and it doesn't make me look gray or ashy under my eyes. It is like the perfect brightening undertone. I'm going to continue using the concealer. I do definitely suggest checking out the concealer. Okay, let's bounce back to the foundation. Now I did wear this for close to 10 hours on Thursday. Saturday, I think I was able to stand it for about five hours. After that, I had to remove it. My biggest beef about it is that it breaks up and settles into every line on the face. I would say about two hours in, you're going to see that. That first hour, it looks absolutely fantastic. Again, beautiful, looks great in photograph, flawless, fantastic. But once you get to that two, three, four hour mark, especially four hours in, things start to get a little bit crazy. It broke up on my chin pretty bad. Not as much on my nose, but I did see some separation. That's pretty normal. Um, I do, just like anyone else, talking, eating, enjoying my day, whatever. I do see any face makeup typically will start to fade and I'll see that right in this area. But it was just a lot more than what I was used to. I don't even notice a line in my chin much right here, but this foundation found a way to settle up close when I would examine my skin. I look like the foundation had actually broken up and sat inside of every pore. Now this formula is Full of dimethicone. I want to say that dimethicone is mentioned about three times in the ingredient list here. Dimethicone can be an iffy ingredient for me and it can cause me to break out. What dimethicone does is it kind of creates like a barrier on the skin and this is why if you've watched my channel before I have said that I'm not a huge fan of pore filling primers because for me it actually clogs, it traps anything that I have going on under my skin and I will get very, very superficial zits, kind of like tiny whiteheads, a lot of blackheads. The first time I wore this and I went to go remove my makeup that night Thursday, I noticed that after that I had a little white head right here on this side of my nose and then I had a couple on my chin. They were very, very tiny and again I just thought, all right, you know, Maybe it's the foundation, I'm not sure, but then I noticed it again when I went to wash my face on Saturday as well, that things got pretty clogged up. So that's something else I noticed as well. I'm really disappointed that this didn't work for me because the coverage is so insane and it does blend out pretty effortlessly. It's just not for me and it's really unfortunate because when I tried mixing it with the facial oil, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but it just, it broke up instantly. When I went in with a sponge and kind of tried to repair things, it worked, but I don't have a way to make this even a little bit more hydrating to where I feel like I could make it work. And again, it just doesn't last for me. It just was not flattering, it didn't work. Yeah, I can't recommend this because my L'Oreal 24 hour freshwear infallible foundation is so buildable and beautiful and offers a very very true natural skin finish that's radiant without being glowy that foundation gives me a second skin feel it is my absolute favorite let me go ahead and share with you guys some of the footage from my wear test last Thursday. So this is my first day testing out the Juvia's Place foundation. I feel like it's already breaking up all over here. I've had it on for about four and a half to five-ish hours. I did use a sponge to apply it and I did make sure that my skin was super hydrated. Keep in mind that I have just had within the last week a hydrofacial as well as a dermaplane which is very exfoliating. So my skin is like perfectly prepped right now for a natural matte foundation. And so far, you guys, I'm just not really that impressed. I will do another check in here in a couple of hours just to kind of give you, you know, another thought and opinion on it. I do want to try it with a brush to see if that makes a difference. Maybe try a couple other primers. I did not use a primer this time around. Also on the concealer it's creasing pretty bad. The concealer does offer some nice coverage. It does blend pretty well, but it's just, again, not holding up very well. I do experience creasing anyways, but this is just creasing a little bit more than normal. So we will see, I'll have to play with it more. I will check in in a little bit. Right, you guys, so check in at number two. It's around, eh, it's probably almost five o'clock right now. I haven't really noticed much more breaking up. I do have to say there are some things that I'm impressed with so far. I am impressed 
with the way that it has wore overall on my face. I do feel like there is some exaggeration to some of my natural texture, I should say more so like my pores. Again, it is clinging a little bit to some dryness on my face, kind of like right here a little bit. I don't know if you guys can really see that. It's kind of broken up right here, more on the chin. You can just kind of see like some of this dry clinginess and kind of around my nose. Um, I'm a little bit harder on foundations because I have so many others that work well for me. Just my opinion so far, I'm gonna continue to wear it. I will check in with you guys again, probably about two or three hours, just to kind of give you guys my final check-in, final thoughts. So I will be right back and I'll be checking with you guys in a little bit. So I am done with work. I have had this foundation on for way too long. I'm actually in the midst of removing it right now. Nothing really changed. I mean, I don't totally hate it. Again, I'm gonna have to keep testing it, wearing it, see how I feel about it. Like I said, in this area here, it's pretty much completely gone. It could have been way worse. So we'll keep playing with it. But so far, again, it's not something that I would reach for. I would probably still stick with my L'Oreal 24 hour fresh wear infallible. That stuff just doesn't do me wrong. And it's like $11.99 at Target. So there you have it. So there you guys have it. Unfortunately, the Juvia's Place I Am Magic Velvety Matte Foundation is a pass for me. Again, if you have drier skin, textured skin, this is something that I just don't suggest. I haven't watched any other reviews on this foundation. I'm now going to because I'm very curious if people just did a straight up first impressions or if they did update after wearing it initially. Because like I said, initially first impressions, it looked very beautiful. It was just actually wearing it is where it failed. And I have some crazy, you guys hate this with lipstick. It just wants to like settle and it just looks so gross. Concealer, fantastic. And I do have to say the Douce palette, I, I, hope, I hope I'm saying it right. I feel like such an idiot when I can't pronounce things properly. This palette was actually quite nice. A lot of you asked the photo that I posted for a tutorial. I actually really, really enjoyed the palette. So I'm excited to try more of their eyeshadow palettes. Again, I really, really like the concealer. I did use it as a base for my shadow and that worked quite well as well. Love the concealer. Really, really like the eyeshadow palette. Sadly, the I Am Magic foundation was a huge fail for me. I don't think that I will be using it on my skin ever, ever again. It just didn't give me enough of a benefit. Way more downside. I think if I was just wanting to do like photographic makeup and I was only going to be wearing it for like an hour, then yeah, because again, initially it looks very beautiful and it photographs beautifully, but long wearing, eh, no, hard pass. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if you had the same experience with this foundation. Did you pick it up? What are your thoughts on it? I also want to know what your skin type is. Did you have oily skin, dry skin, or was there a way that you were able to manipulate the formula to make it work? I love hearing your feedback. Maybe there's something different that I can do. So let me know. Give this video a huge thumbs up if you liked it, share it, and of course, be sure to subscribe to my channel before you go. I love you guys so, so much, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye, guys.